Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video. In this video, we'll be developing a simple game using Pygame. So let's get started. Let's initialize Pygame. So at first, let's create a screen of width and height. Let's create the screen with as 1080 and let the screen height be 720. So what we've done here is we've created a screen of 1080 by 720, put it into a list and we've initialized pygame.display and initialized it to a variable called screen. Let's also give a caption to the window. Let's call it simple game. Now let's create colors to fill the screen. Let's create a shade of gray and black. These colors represent RGB, red, green, and blue. They're hex numbers, that's why they are, they have a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of 255. Now what we need to do is we need to create a variable called play or something else so, so that we can run the while loop in which you fill the screen with the color gray and update the screen. Let's create a variable called play and initialize it to true. So the loop's going to go like while true, fill screen with gray and update the screen. This seems like an infinite loop and we'll never be able to exit the game. So let's create a function called check for event and let's check if the X mark is clicked to close the game. Now that we've created the event, we need to call the event in the main loop as well. And once we exit the loop, we need to quit the game. Let's try this out and see what happens. So as you can see, we initialized the screen and filled it with gray color. Now let's initialize the first sprite of the game, which is a basketball. So first let's import the image of the basketball. Make sure that the image you're loading is present in the same directory as your Python file. Now we need to display the basketball on the screen. So let's pick a random position X on the screen. For that we need to import random module. Now let's give the X position of the ball as a random position between 0 and the screen width. And let's give the Y position as 0 for now. Let's also mention the width of the image, which is 100 pixels. Let's call it radius for now. Let's also initialize the point which represents the ball. Let's keep it at the middle of the image. Now that's done, we need to show the image of the ball on the screen. So let's create a function called show images where we'll show the basketball image. Now we need to call the show images in the main loop. Let's do that now. Now let's just see if the image is being shown on the screen or not. As you can see, the image is being randomly initialized. Now let's make the ball fall to the ground and reinitialize whenever it completes the fall. Let's first create a variable called speed. This is the speed with which the ball falls down. I have kept it as five. Now let's create a function called update ball position to update the position of the ball for every frame. While we are at it, we need to represent the X and Y representation of the ball as well. Now let's call the update ball position in the main loop as well. As you can see, the ball is moving really fast. So what we'll do is let's create a clock and slow down the pace at which the ball falls. For this, we'll create a clock variable and get the time.clock from the pykey module. Now, set, now let's call the clock.tick function in the main loop. Let's keep it at a comfortable 60 frames per second. Now the ball falls much slower. Now let's create a function to reinitialize the ball once it finishes the drop. Let's call the function initialize ball. So with this function, what's going to happen is once the y position of the ball re exceeds the screen height minus radius, the y position of the ball is going to get reset to zero and x is going to be randomly initialized between zero and the screen width. Just as an assurance as to the ball not getting initialized outside the screen, let's create a function called enforce border so that 
we can keep a border around the window such that the ball does not move through the window. So what this is going to do is if x is less than 0, it's going to initialize it to the starting of the screen width. If x is greater than screen width minus radius, it's going to initialize x as screen width minus radius. And if the ball is above the screen window, it's going to initialize it to 0. And if it's and if the ball is below the screen window, it's going to initialize it to screen height minus radius. Before going any further, let's call the initialize ball function inside the update update ball pause function itself. This way we do not need to call another function in the main loop. The function which we need to call inside the main loop is enforce portal. Let's do that also right now. Let's test the game right now. As you can see, when the ball reaches the bottom, it's getting reinitialized re to the top. Now let's create another sprite called as basket and let's load the image of a basket. From the image, let's also initialize the width of the basket. Here it's 125 pixels. So here what we've done is we've loaded the image of the basket into a variable called basket. We've initialized the basket width as 125 pixels. And the initial position of the basket is 450 and 600. We've also given the basket a speed of 8 pixels per frame. As we initialize the basketball with one point, we are going to initialize the basket with a region. The starting point of the basket region is basket x position plus 31 and it ends at basket x position plus 94. The same applies to the to y also starting at basket pause y plus 14 and ending at basket pause y plus 20. We use this to check if the ba basketball image representation is in the basket representation region. If it is, we in increase the score by 1. If it's not, we don't make any changes to the score. Now let's make changes to the show image function to accommodate displaying of the basket as well. Now let's just test this out. As you can see, the basket has been initialized to the bottom of the screen. We have given the basket a speed of 8 because we intend on moving the basket. So we want to move the basket using the right and left arrow keys. So let's make some modifications for the check for event function and make that possible. So what we did here was we initialized basket pause x and basket pause y as global variables and we created a list called keys. It takes the input of all the keys which are pressed at a given moment and stores it into the list. Then what we check is we check for then what we do is we check if the key pressed is key underscore left. If it is we reduce the exposition of the basket by basket speed. If, it, if the key pressed is right, we increase the exposition of the basket by basket speed. By this, we have enabled the basket with movements. But what we have not done is we have not enabled the basket representation region to be moved. So we need to include that as well. Let's include that in the show images function. To do that, we'll have to initialize those two variables as global variables. Let's do that. So let's test this out now. We can move the basket, but the basket moves outside the window. So let's enforce the borders to the basket as well. So what we've done here is we've initialized the basketball pause X and pause Y as global variables. And we've just enforced the border here the same way we enforce the border for the basketball as well. Now let's test this out. As you can see, the basket does not move outside the window, and that's also a problem. Now we need to check if the bas if the basketball falls into the basket, and if it does, we need to increment the score by plus one. So first, let's create a variable called score. Now let's create a function called check for score to check if the basketball 
actually fell into the basket or not. Here what we've done is we check if the X representation of the ball is within the basket region which we mentioned earlier and if Y representation of the ball is inside the Y region of the basket. If it is, we increase the score by 1. If it's not, we reset the score to 0. We could have used an else condition but we chose else if just to be sure. Now let's create one more function called show score just to print out the score. We will be modifying this function later to display the score on the screen. For now we'll just be printing it on the terminal. So now let's call these two functions inside the main loop. Now let's test this out. So as you can see the scores are being displayed continuously and as and when we get a basket the score increased by 1 if we don't get a basket it resets to 0. Now let's try to display the score on the game window. For that we need to import a font from the pygame module and do a bunch of stuff. Let's do that right now. So what we've done here is we've initialized the position where we want the font to appear and we've initialized the font with Pygame you get free sans bold as a default font but if you want to include other fonts you can download the TTF of the font and just place it in the same folder as your python file and load the font as you loaded the other images like basketball and the basket image. Now we need to render the font as in we need to decide what we need to display as the font. So let's go to the show score and let's modify that function a bit. So what we are going to do here is basically we are going to create a variable and we are going to decide what, are, what we want to display, render it and store it in the variable and we'll just be displaying that variable on the screen as we display the, the other images. So here what we've done is we've chosen the variable as score.display and this is the format with which we want the font to be displayed. We want score followed by the string of the score, string of the present score and we want the font to be in black color and we also want to enable anti-aliasing to make the font look smooth. Then we just display the font using screen.blit and let's remove the print dot print score to make the terminal look clean. Let's try if this works. As you can see the scoreboard has appeared and the score updates as and when we play the game. If you fail to catch the ball it resets to zero and if we catch the ball it increases by one. Now the next part is let's just add some sound effects as to notify us that we caught a ball. Just something to keep in mind, the sound effects which you want to play when some event occurs, those the format of the sound effect should be .wav and make sure that the .wav file is in the same folder as your python file. Let's just import the sound effect of a tick and let's play the sound effect in the check for score function itself. If we are adding the score plus one, we want to play the sound effect. So let's just give it as tick dot play. Now let's test the changes. So as and when the ball falls inside the basket, we hear the tick sound. It's not the best sound effect, but it's just for representation purposes. So let's conclude this short tutorial right here if you want a more in-depth tutorial please refer to the playlist where i made an in-depth tutorial which consists of four parts each part covering a specific portion of the game development do check it out leave a like to this video if you like the video and, and do subscribe to my channel stay tuned for more content regarding python and other cool stuff regarding to python